<laughs> All right. Welcome to the Big Story Podcast. Today, I've got a fantastic guest. Better be. Better be fantastic. Because I'm just I put all the chips in the corner here. I'm betting big. Wow, pressure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Wilfredo Torres is joining me today. And I'm super excited to have you here. Uh, is Will okay? Do you go by Will or is it? Right. Do you have a, yeah, cool. Um, thanks for joining. I'm really happy to have you here, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Um, so you you and I have it's it's funny you you have been this sort of presence in my uh, social circle for a long time you know, unbeknownst to you of course um, because we have a, a mutual friend who I've known for Jesus close Jesus we're closing no no I guess twenty five plus years you know so Tom Feaster and I, and I go way back um, and I met him brief I met him right after he guess he got out of uh, a year or so after he got out of college and uh oh i thought you were gonna say prison no well, <laughs> i so saw I, I met him shortly after that yeah yeah well mm -hmm. his um his apartment his apartment in the ford factory looked like a looked like a prison it was cool very it was very cool but it was just this giant concrete block of a room so okay um yeah, that that was a that was actually a very cool apartment. And it's like, it's like one of those that was one of those friendships where you um you step in you step in you know like you know when you're young you're like oh hey you're cool you're cool and then it's like hey man I'm moving in two weeks you want to help me move you know and you're like okay you know so um but like we you know we had you know we were just you know comic buddies and you, know, you just you do what you do especially when you're young and you're invulnerable you can carry anything um, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, I, that was a, was a 1997 or eight, I guess is when I, when I first bumped into that cat. Okay. Yeah. 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 You've known him a lot longer than I have. Yeah. Well, yeah, but you probably know him far better because you've been closer to him for a longer period of time than that's, I have. Yeah. That's my buddy. He's a good guy. He's a great guy. Um, yeah. and, uh, yeah, man, we, uh, <laughs> Tom and I both share a, uh, a, uh, one, of, one of those things when you, you like something that you know is not really good, but you know, you'll, you'll die in the hill kind of thing, you know, like the Spice Girls movie, that's the one that we will both die in the hill saying it's really good. Yeah. I can't go there with you. On no, that. <laughs> in, in nor should you, but we, uh, we were, we went to the movie and we're like, this is actually really fun. So I, you know. I don't know. I don't, I'll never watch it again. Cause I can't, you know, I won't do that to myself because there's that chance. That, uh, I kept wondering why Tom had like a bunch of spice girls, like <laughs> or t-shirts. Yeah. Well now, you know, and you know, <laughs> and you know what to get him for his birthday. So it'll be great. <laughs> oh man. So love the shot of your studio. This is very cool for anybody who's just listening to our dulcet tones. You could go see this on YouTube and check out Will's amazing uh, thing. You now you've got a lot. Is that a lot of uh, art that you've collected, or is this some of your work? Or no, what? no, I'm not. I'm not arrogant enough to put up any of my own stuff on the walls. Yeah, this is all other people whose work I, I like a lot more. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, it's funny. Like, so my, my wife is an artist and, you know, and, you know, ostensibly I've, I've, I've dabbled as, as I'll say for a decade, um, you know, and like, we don't have any of our, our personal works really in the house. Like it's just not, there's a couple, there's a couple pieces, but they're mostly because of storage issues. Like <laughs> she has this very large horse sculpture and it's like, well, where do you put it? You know? So it just sort of sticks in this corner and, you know, in our living room. And it's just, we kind of ignore that it exists, you know, and mm. uh, it's just one of those kinds of things. So and I, yeah, I don't, I'm not like, I don't want to see the things that I make too often, you know, I'm like, well, you know, it's nicer to put it behind me. It's, it's one of those things where I just, if I had anything up where it was constantly in view, mm -hmm. I just keep picking it apart. Mm -hmm. like when I finish, if I finish a page, the first thing I do, I scan it and then it goes away. It right. goes away. I don't want to see it again. 
because I'm just going to look at it and say, well, I could have, I could redraw that panel. Yeah. Fix this or whatever. No, it's, it, I mean, like if you allow yourself a creator creative and like, if you have this personal bug in you and if you allow yourself the opportunity, you could just work on the same thing forever. Oh yeah. You will, you will never know. Like I came up with this idea. I was talking to a, someone who was in art school. They were young. And I, and I said, you know, what would be a great project for a young art student would be to do some sort of piece, come up with a conceptual idea for a piece, whatever the thing is, execute it, and then revisit it every 10 or five, 10 or five years, whatever that frequency is that works for you, and reapproach the idea and see how you like what your like what your skill set and thinking sort of changes over time. Um, yeah, but then. I don't know. I, don't, I mean, I, it seems like a good grant project. I don't know. There's something there, There's something to it. it yeah. Uh, there's yeah. a there's a sick part of me now that kind of wants to try doing that just to see. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, you know, I and I did I did a similar thing. Not that idea. But when I was I don't know, this is maybe 10 ish years ago, maybe somewhere a little later. I had like. You know, I haven't been I haven't done comic books since you know the the nineties. You know, like my last work was a bit like nineteen ninety nine. You know, and um, and I was I, I was sitting in my studio, and I realized I had all these kind of unfinished things that I had started. You know, here or there, and I'm like, and I thought like, I'm just going to carry these like sort of unfinished pieces of whatever around for the rest of my life like that doesn't seem cool so what i did is i ended up just kind of finishing them up like and that mostly sort of became me redoing them but it was good. at least it was sort of like okay i'm done with that i can cross it off my sort of existential list in life and and you know so it was a little hobby project mm. yeah i don't know um so like where did now like where did you like kind of where did you grow up and where like where did like your whole sort of creative beginning start for you? Um, well, I'm originally from New York, grew up in New Jersey, kind okay. of the suburbs of New Jersey, kind of you know, 45 minutes an hour out, outside of Manhattan. Um, and then moved to Atlanta in my 30s. OK, so, yeah. So, I, like, what now? Like, what was your family like? I mean, was it was it just you or the brothers and sisters? Um, I have siblings. I grew up with my little sister, me and my okay. mom. Um, yeah, so it was just the three of us. Okay, most of the time. And like, were you do like? I mean, like, when you were young, because like. Like I kind of know how you kind of got into the into the game, and we'll talk about that in a little while. But like when you were young, I mean, were you were you were you drawing, or were you like making things, or was this something that wasn't part of the lifestyle, or what? Um, oh no, I was drawing. Yeah, incessantly. It's okay. All I all I did was draw and read comic books and watch okay. TV. So um, I wasn't much of an outdoor kid. Right. Uh, but it was um, it was a very solitary thing. I, I did that. It was just me. Um, I didn't really have growing up. I didn't have friends that read comic books or were into the things I was into. Mm -hmm. um, so it was just kind of something that was just for me until I got until really until I was an adult. Wow. OK, because like it, it's interesting because like. Like I had one fr friend like in elementary school, like we were both kind of comic book, like we, you know, we'd known each other I think since we were like four. So we, you know, we were just always there and I, it, something clearly was like, oh, you like comics too. And like, we were both like, so like he was getting the X-Men when Claremont, I think it was Claremont and Cockermer, Claremont and Byrne were doing their run. And I was getting the Avengers when, Byrne was doing the Avengers and then it hopped over to Perez doing it. So like we were like get together and we would like, you know, hand our comic books back and forth and get into that stuff. And it was kind of fun to have someone at that young age kind of share that sort of, because all my siblings were much older than me. So they could care less about what I was doing. So, um, 
and then high school, I, I ended up getting kind of a group of friends who were all kind of into comic books and that sort of expanded the palette. But um, so, so that's interesting. So you kind of had this sort of, sort of lone wolf kind of engagement with, with the comics. For the most part. Yeah. Um, I had uh, my one friend, Jason, was a twin and his two older brothers were twins. And um, oh. they were really the only kids that I knew that were into comic books at all. Okay. And uh, we rode the bus together, but that was kind of like the extent of our friendship. Like I went to his house a few times. Right. The, the, the bus to school. And um, I mean, most kids in school knew that I drew. I was the kid that could draw. Sure. Hey, we need this thing drawn. Can you draw this yeah. thing for us? And you're like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So um, he's he, he actually my friend Jason is actually the one that put me on to uh, Perez on Teen Titans. Oh, very cool. A debt I will owe him forever. Yeah, that's that's yeah that's a sort of an unpayable debt. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Now that's so that's so yeah, it, but that's so kind of interesting that like the 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 kinship really existed on this <clears throat> limited format of being on the bus together. You know, maybe you guys are probably like pulling comic books out and like looking at them on the ride and then let, put them in your backpack and then. Oh, I never took my comic books to school. Oh, okay. Too much of a. A risk? You know, too much of a risk of them getting lost or damaged. Yeah. No. Okay. They at home. <laughs> they, yeah, I, they were on the, they, they went to me with school in elementary school. Like I would just. I, I just sat and looked at comics in the class in my classes. I didn't seem to care. Um, I think the only time I took comic books to school was maybe my sophomore junior year in high school. All right. I had like in school suspension. So you basically yeah. have to sit in this one room all day. And I showed up with like a stack of Bob Layton Iron Man comics. Yeah. And just sat there and just went through them all day. <laughs> How does he make it look so shiny? Like, I, don't know. I still don't, I don't know. know. None of us know. It's this like anybody who's in our sort of age bracket, like like that is just locked in our head. Like it's yeah. incredible. I still don't know. Yeah, it's just I, lines. It's just lines on paper. <laughs> is it? Is it just lines? Like, or was it a deal with the devil? I don't know, man. Like, know. It, it really it it really added some flash to our, to our childhoods, I would say. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so that's that. Okay. That's, that's interesting. But then you said like, so then like, I'm guessing like going to Atlanta and you were saying like, at that night, like, that, so I guess. So what happened in between? Like, where's this kid who loves comics, who, you know, is a compulsive, you know, drawer. drawer. It's official. It's an official word. And like, how does that kid, like what happens between then and then like when you get into the business when you're not a kid anymore. So like what, like what happened? Uh, the, uh, basically what ended up happening was uh, my girlfriend, my now late wife okay, uh, was the only person that I let in far enough to see all of the the drawings the comics just everything like you know me unfiltered yeah and then once she saw like how important it was to me and how passionate I was about it but it was something that I just kind of kept to myself then she kind of encouraged me to try okay. you know but I hadn't like I said like I I I'd never been to a convention until I was in my 30s. Wow. I didn't have any uh, older comic book friends. I didn't have any friends that were artists or drew, really. Mm -hmm. um, so it was, I, I didn't even know how to go about things. Right. Um, so one day she's like, well, we're going to, let's go into the city. And I'm like, okay. So we, you know, we drive into the city and um, we're like driving around Manhattan. And then all of a sudden I kind of look up because she's starting to park, but it's all like corporate 
buildings and stuff. Okay. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, what the hell are we doing here? And um, she's like, well, come on. And I look up at the freaking building and it was the the 666. Yeah. Uh, when DC was had their offices there. Sure. And I'm like, what are we doing here? And she's like, well, I, I looked in the back of one of your comic books and I got the address. So I figured we'd come and look at it. And I'm like, I don't think people do that. <laughs> I don't think that's how it works. And she's like, well, neither one of us knows how it works. So let's go find out. Wow. And uh, we walked into the building and I'm, I'm, she was like very outgoing. I don't even like asking, you know, for things at like a restaurant. Right. Um, and she just walks up to the, you know, the security guy at the desk. Yeah. And says, you know, asked him which floor the DC offices were on. <laughs> and he said 25. Yep. And I'm like, you know, she's just walking ahead of me, knowing like, that I'm like, get out of here. here. How can I run away? I'm like, you know, <laughs> like what's happening? Yeah. Um, we got an elevator, went up, uh, doors opened up, and it was like this huge golden DC bullet yep. on the wall. And then you turn and the reception desk was there. And that's when they had the Clark. I don't know if they still have that, but the they had this huge life size statue of uh superman busting through the wall and the bricks yeah. were all flying out and all the furniture was red yellow and blue yeah um and she just went up to the receptionist and asked like how do artists get jobs huh and she pointed to this huge stack you know yeah i'm old there's a huge stack of mailed in uh, submissions mm -hmm. that were just sitting on her desk and she kind of walked us through it and said wow. you know people do samples they send them in um, there's a guy here whose job it is to look at them all and if they like it they get in touch with you whatever so we went back home I had a fire under my ass started drawing up samples and uh, I did that for a little bit with very little uh, field have feedback. Yeah. Um, and then shortly after we had, uh, we got pregnant with my daughter. Mm -hmm. And once I figured, yeah, none of this is going to buy diapers. Right. I just kind of shelved it. And um I literally, like, I did not draw for, like, 12 years. Wow. Because I was like... Oh. Yeah. No, no, you're sure. Um, right. Like, I mean, the, the, the priorities change, the shift, everything sort of like this, these things happen in our lives. And then you kind of go, okay, well, listen, like, I, things were, things were, everything was functioning fine before this, this sort of variable came into play. Now I've got a bigger, more important variable that, like, I... I am, I am genetically compelled to take care of. So yeah. I, you know, I can't see how I can sort of do both at the moment. Like, and like, yeah, I, I, I get that. What was like, where were like, I don't understand how, cause I mean, there's, uh, you know, there's a bunch of guys that I know that are working professionals and have had babies. And, and I'm like, yeah. I don't, I don't understand. Yeah. I don't understand how you compartmentalize things to be able to do all of it. I mm. mean, hats off. I, yeah. I couldn't. yeah, it's you know, it, it's it's you know, it's interesting. I, I was actually talking with a friend of mine yesterday, and uh, she has two kids, and I'm I've been fascinated with when she talks about writing because she's a she's an author, and like she's like you know, listen, like for her, it's like I've got this tiny window. Like the kids are sleeping or they're, you know, they're at, they're at a play date or what are these little gaps are. And those gaps became the most important aspect. Like the only thing that she, if she didn't have anything that needed to be done in the world, like to keep the world going, she would sit and she would write. And that deadline of an hour of two hours, whatever it was, was a thing. And she's like, okay, well, this is it. Like I'm, 
no one's going to give me the time after that. Like my yeah. kids are going to need, need everything from me. And so she would write and she would just put that sort of time in and, and, you know, and some, and some people are phenomenal at that. Like that, you know, it's a natural skill set for them. And um, yeah, no, I, I get it. And it is like, I mean, that's also probably why there's a lot of comic book artists who don't have children, you know, like it is, it is such a all consuming, you know, career. Um, it is. And it's so, I mean, it's, uh, every part of it, especially with, with art is so time, mm -hmm. you know, intensive, intensive you have yeah. to put so much into it and, uh, you know, understand some people are good at time management. Yeah. If they say, well, I can whittle out an hour or two here um, and I'll just take advantage of that and work for those two hours. I can't. Like I'll sit down to work and then I like black out and it's like eight hours later. So yeah, we were, t we were talking about the time thing. And one of the, I think one of the interesting things about being able to talk to a bunch of different creators at all different sort of areas in the comic industry is how there's a younger generation of self-producing comic book artists out there who like do a page in four hours. Yeah. And it blew my mind. And what I realized is that like, and I'm sure you heard the adage, like, well, you got to do a page a day to get in the business. That was the sort of the model. And so I'm like, okay, well, a day is 24 hours. So all I have to do is just get a page done in one day and I'm good to go. Um, am I cutting out again? Uh, there's a lag. Yeah. Stupid lag. This sucks. Cause this is getting good. Um, so I'm so annoyed that I can't plug in. You know what you can't find? I can't find a USB to USB cable. Like that is just the same USB thing on each end. It's always USB to something else. Gotcha. And I just need a USB to, but I can't, I don't seem to have one. Um, uh, yeah. All right. Is this not working? Cause I don't, I, <laughs> I don't know. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to cry. I just had such a hard time with computers this week. I just so exhausted by these things. Um, well, it's dude, now. <laughs> great. I don't know how long it's going to last, but yeah. All right. Well, it's going to be a lot of work on my end cutting this out. So it'll be a tight, it'll be a tight talk. <laughs> so, but like, there's these young creators out there and they're doing pages in, in four hours and because they're running their own empire, they're, they're producing their comics or publishing them, they're distributing them. And I realized like, Oh, like they framed it as a, as a business problem and solved the business problem. And they said, okay, well, I, this is the time that I have to do it. And, yeah. you know, in, in the tra traditional comic sense, we have this bar of, 70 years of comic book art where we go, well, we got to let, we got to measure up to that. Um, so like, and, and I think that's part of the blackout that happens with you. You black out and you're, you're battling the Titans for eight hours. Yeah. Who were not battling anyone. <laughs> they probably. were just kind of doing yeah. their thing. They're probably, you know, closer to the younger crop of kids Yes. than any of the guys in between because they're just look this just needs to happen it just yeah. needs to get done and you know they're not they're not too in their heads about it yeah we call them geniuses now you know <laughs> like i mean i mean kirby i if kirby spent four hours on a page i would be surprised when right <laughs> when kirby could probably get like 15 pages done in right. four hours and, and have lunch in between and smoke a cigar yeah so, and like it, so like those guys like so like somehow you know we we you know there's just this i think it's just the infestation of detail kind of came into play um and we just started kind of going, oh we need to have more we need to and like you know i gotta outdo neil adams you know like whatever Whatever yeah. the thing is, whatever um, mountain you you were you know choosing to face, yeah, whatever mountain you create, 
you know, because yeah. it's, and it's, it's so, it's so interesting. And, you know, and I go, and I go like, wow, if like, if I had to face that, that blank page as a comic book artist today with the knowledge and understanding, like, how would I solve that problem? Would I, would I, would I get caught up in the things that I got caught up with that put me at the table for 10 to 12 hours? Like, I am, um, when, when Tom was still with uh, Revolver, yeah, um, I I was helping him out on something, so I was at the at the studio. Dexter was in the office. Dexter Vines was in the office, and um, I took advantage and poked my head into his office so I could kind of, you know, snoop on what he was working on. Yeah, and he's sitting at his desk with this like double page spread from Olivia Copio when he, they were doing Thor. Mm -hmm. right? And he's inking this thing. And I mean, his hand is just going from one end of the the the, the image to the other. It never stopped. It yeah. was just, and it was just like this, there was this confidence and just this speed to it. And I asked him, I, I said, you know, how, how do you, how do you do that? Like, how, how do you do that so quickly, so confidently? And he said, um, the key to it is to not sit back in your chair. Mm. And I'm like thinking about it and I'm like, and it applies to inking. It applies to all of it really because the moment you sit back in your chair and you look at it you stop you look yeah. at it then that's when you start second guessing yourself sure that's when you start wondering well should i have done this with that or this is i don't want to start there or you know it, it gives you that moment yeah to hesitate to let that you know all that doubt kind of creep in. Sure. He just launches in. He just yeah. launches in and does what he knows comes naturally. And it just happens. Yeah. Still, I mean, I, I get it. Yeah. Mentally, I mm -hmm. get it. I can explain it. I, I know how to rationalize it, but I can't do it. Yeah. It's like, you know, you, when you were talking about it, it was making me think of like, you know, when you see that classic sort of story of like a painter you know and they step back from the canvas and they they look at the canvas and they look at the subject you know they hold their arm out with their brush you know they're they're seeing if they're you know everything works and then like like that's the difference is like that is art and what dexter is doing is he, he's making a product that's got to get done it's got to get out there and he's got all this you know he has decades of experience and he's so he's like listen i'm gonna let the thing happen and you know, the line here in the corner for this background thing is no more important than the line for the eye. Like it's all, it's, they're all lines and they got to get done, you know? Yeah. yeah. But man, think about the man hours that goes into that combo with those two artists. So it's just a lot of, that's a lot of time. It's, 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 <laughs> yeah. And that's one thing, like, if you look at my stuff compared to either one of them, I'm like looking at it and I'm like, there's so many lines. Right. <laughs> Yeah, Why are there so many lines. But think, but so, but it's interesting because you know, I think about like you know, I, you know, think about your work and looking at your work, and I go, oh yeah, but like, the thing is, is that like, your work doesn't have a ton of lines in it. So actually, at that point, the line, you know, those the the each line becomes that much more important. Yeah, so it becomes it it's extra so, time to deliberate and second yeah. guess myself. Right. Right. Because if you're like, if you're like a, you know, an artist who does a lot of sort of rendering, you know, you, you really kind of, you're, you're kind of sculpting, you know, you're with, it up. yeah. Yeah. And so there's, there's this sort of kind of like ability to kind of like allow that craft, that's that version of the craft to really kind of let you kind of work your way through it. But in your regard, it's like, okay, like I now have to edit down this concept to his, you know, it, to a very, you know, limited number like it's like writing haiku you know like you're like this is all i got i can't yeah. make I, I i gotta go five seven five that's all i've got like i can't i can't create a different meter um yeah. so that's a that's so it's so it is tough and i and i i get that like i really get that because i really have that sort of philosophy of like 
if it if the everything doesn't completely support the story and can't be removed we'll remove it remove it until you can't remove it and because yeah. it's kind of been my design philosophy but like in art i think that's very much like what you have mike mignola is a great example like his stuff is very simple but there's a lot of thinking behind that simplicity and yeah. you you take away a dot or a line and it really it falls apart because it's a very it's, it's a very sort of refined construction yeah absolutely uh, yeah. So we're like, so, I mean, like you were talking about like, you know, your sort of your mindset, like in, you know, your late, your late wife sort of blessed you with this sort of, sort of like, it's a real thing. You can do it. Like there are people who do it and there's a pathway, but like, what was your, what, what was your mind mindset? Like, you know, when you finally said, Hey, I'm going to try to do this. Um, like, I mean, what was, was there, was there a part of you that's trying to talk you out of it? You know, cause you were seeing, you know, again, that, that was her, all okay. of it was her. It okay. was just, you know, um, you know, at this point, um, I'd been working my adult life in, uh, it, you know, help desk, uh, type stuff. And I was, I was very happy at home. My my family was awesome. Um, but every day I came home from work and I was just, you know, I, I, <laughs> I it took me about an hour to 45 minutes to just Deep calm rest. down because yeah. I, I hated it so mm. much. And uh, she was like, you know, you're, you're miserable. Like you're <laughs> miserable having to do this because you're spending, you know, eight, nine hours a day, five days a week, you know, 52 weeks a year that pretending to, to care about something that you could give a rat's ass about. Yeah. Um, and at this point, you know, uh, the kids were older. They had their, their own things going on. They didn't need, you know, constant attention. So she just encouraged me and said, you know, now's the time. We're in a position to do it. We're, you know, we have our own place. The kids are older, you know, give it a shot. Um, and if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. You don't lose anything that you didn't already not have. Um, mm -hmm. And you'll just know, at least you'll know that you gave it an honest shot. And that's it. Yeah. And um, at the time, you know, we're like, well, let's look around for like uh, local conventions or whatever. And we ended up going to like a one day show that was like, uh, you know, people were doing like their own uh, stapled together Xeroxed comic cool. books. And um, I met these guys that were like a local group, uh, Terminus. And um, they kind of met up every Sunday afternoon in the back of a comic shop and Ooh. tried to put together their own uh, kind of anthology books. And um, that's once once I got that little uh, sense, that little community, even though it was just a bunch of people, like there was like 10 of us. Um, yeah. you got that sense of community and you're like, all right, well, a lot of the questions that I have, some of these guys know the answers to, uh -huh. and even when they don't know the answers to them, some, some of them know people who do know the answers to it. Right. So it was, um, it was, it was tough. Cause it's, you know, also I don't have, um, I don't have an art education. So as I'm going through, um, you're kind of learning everything piecemeal. Mm -hmm. So you're like learning how to build a transmission without knowing how to change the oil. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> Where it's like, yeah, sure. you know these like high level things, but you don't know all these other things that need to happen beforehand. Yes. 
if that makes sense at all. No, it's no, no, no. It makes complete sense. There's, there's a, there, there, there's a, there's a sort of a thing that happens when people lock into uh, the finished result of something, but they don't understand the structural, you know, factors of something. So you will end up getting a lot of like, you know, like comic books with like splash pages and, you know, you know, you don't see people's feet because the people don't know how to put people into like areas and make them seem like they're all in the same plane. Like, so there's this whole kind of thing that happens because they don't under, they don't understand. They, and you, you sort of work around it, but um, I, I get totally what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, but through that, thankfully, you know, uh, the biggest thing that came out of that was that I got to meet uh, Brian Stelfreeze. Well, and that, then that's that's kind of where my art education started. Yeah. Oh, that's real. Okay, so that's that's a pretty good person to have an education from. So, because I, I was, a, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I was I was about to ask you, like, so how did like how did that transition from this sort of okay, like I know there are things that I don't know, and I'm not sure how to learn these things, and now the the answer is coming coming forward. So the the font of information that Brian is uh is came 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 into your world yeah huh yeah and you know i didn't um i didn't get to spend a ton of time with him i'd get like you know a half an hour here 45 minutes there an hour right. here, or whatever but um i just i made sure that every little tiny nugget of yeah. information that he you know gifted out I tried to process as much as possible. For sure. Um, and I don't know how many portfolio reviews Brian did for me, but those were all, you know, it's one of those things where it's, there's a lot of people, I'm, I'm one of those people where I, I, I like doing portfolio reviews, but I don't mm -hmm. always know um, how to instruct someone on how to, I can point out, well, you're, you need to work on this. You need to work on this, but I can't always necessarily tell you what you need to do. Right. Like here are the so, things you need to do to get past that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like a, you know, if you had like a, a trainer that tell, <laughs> tells you, well, obviously you need to work on your, your legs, but yeah. can't tell you what you need to do to make your legs stronger. For sure. Um, yeah. And well, I guess it's not. He can. He yeah. has the language, yep, and the ability to to actually instruct and, yeah. and tell you what you need to do, what you need to work on, what you need to do to work on it. Mm -hmm. So that was invaluable. It's you know it's yeah and it's interesting because I think that often when that happens with a lot of people the the response is. Well, I mean, just look at a lot of the comic book artists you like and figure out how they do it. And like, yeah. that's, that's the, that's the non-answer, you know, because what you're not, you're not giving the person the tools to actually understand something. You're just saying, look at somebody who's done it where you might think it's the right way of doing it and do that. Like, yeah. and that becomes derivative versus constructive, um, that's yeah. That, that's I mean that's super interesting. Did you? I mean, so like, like I you know I have the, I have a degree you know in drawing comic books and you know and I did that I did that for a decade and then I went into graphic design and I've been doing that for the last 23, 23 ish years and I don't have a degree in design and there's always and I've had some great jobs and great clients I had, but there's this like imposter syndrome that like sort of is in the back of my mind um and i didn't have it in comic books because i had a piece of paper that said this is what i can do you know yeah. and it was it's ridiculous you know it's so ridiculous in that in that sense because like 99 percent of my favorite comic book artists never took an art class or never went to you know to college so it, it's just whatever um but like did that ever play into like it, you know, into your thinking? Cause like you were saying, like when someone asks you a question, like, I don't know, I don't can't answer yeah. this. Yeah. Like, Oh, still. Yeah. I, I, I deal with that almost every day. Yeah. And yet yeah. you do it every day. And we, and we're, and we're burdened with this imposter syndrome. It's like, yeah. 
get over ourselves. Especially, I mean, and and I've had so many conversations with other artists, um, and I'm sure other people have felt that way before. Mm -hmm. But for me, at this moment, I feel like the the level of talent and ability in comic book art right now is just it's off the charts it's, i've never seen anything like it no it's it's it is ridiculously good i, I it is you know sure whatever golden age of comic books there was but forget about it like this is the golden age of comic books because it is the apex of skill and technology coming together at a level that just we've never seen before i mean because like we you know we had like the comic books that we can we, we we can put on the mountain of greatness you know the the moon knights and the daredevils by the by the luminary artists and creators that did these books but they didn't have the technology behind those books to make them look a fraction of what they and, and so they overcame the shortcomings with their stories and their art yeah. but the people don't have to overcome anything now you can do whatever you want and yeah. it's going to get on that page and because of i feel like um because of the tools and everything that we have now, um, you know, you look at guys like Cliff Chang and Joe Canones and Mitch Gerards, they're they're one stop shops. Yes. They're, you know, they're doing the the line art, they're inking themselves, they're yep. doing the colors, they they can do everything. All of it. All so of it. So I feel like we're getting that much close and, and Cliff is already doing it Woo. with his book. Cliff, Cliff, Cliff. We're getting back to that age of like yeah. the pure cartoonist yes. who does all of it. Yes. Yeah. And you know just, what I mean? It's like Bill Watterson, you know, yeah. like Bill, Bill Watterson, like did the mic drop on, you know, on the daily or Sunday comic book world by saying, what are you going to do? It doesn't get better than this, you know, and, and, it, and it, it wasn't it wasn't an ego thing. It's just that like he was doing it at such a high level. And I mean, and Cliff is doing, like, in my opinion, Cliff is doing what no one's really done in the modern age of comic books. He is doing the whole thing. The whole and like, thing. There, are, there are indie people out there doing the whole thing, but they're not doing it for a major publisher. They're not doing it on that level of what he's doing. And it's, I mean, it's, we're getting to see something that's going to be standing up in time as oh, one absolutely. of the great things, you know? Yeah. There's going to be year one, and then there's going to be Cliff's cat. Like, yeah. they're going to be there. And yeah. we're and we're all good. We're all better off for it. Um, yeah. And and I think it's like, I think what also it is like what Mitch is doing. And like I mean, we, when, when I had Doc on the show, like you know, I mean, I you know, Doc was like, you can tell he was like, I got to measure up to what Mitch is doing. Like I got to up my game because what what Mitch is bringing to the table. And Doc is freaking amazing. Yeah. And, and, but like, you know, I don't think he was as much of a one stop shop before that that project you know yeah and and and, and the i mean not talent wise it, you're it's apples and oranges yes because everything is i don't feel like you can really compare one to another no. for, between those two or or anything else really but the skill set mm -hmm. mitch is coming in with a with a skill set that really not a lot of artists that are working today have yeah because of his design background because of his technical ability and because of he kind of has this uh very blue collar sure. workman like yes. attitude towards it all yeah where there's there's very little ego in it it's yeah. just something that needs to happen i'm going to do the best job that i can you know that i'm capable of doing right. But it just needs to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Like, listen, when, when the plumber does a great job setting up the plumbing in the house, like, and they're like, it is not going to fail. Like, there's not going to be a problem. And they can walk away and they could be, th they're happy and confident in what they do. Like, yeah. it's, it's a thing. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a, I mean, it's a really, I mean, it's, it's an amazing period. And I think what, like, you know, what people like Mitch, um, you know, and, you know, Greg Smallwood and all these guys, but like, what, I know, I know. And what, but what, like, what Cliff is doing, Cliff is doing the four minute mile. He is, so like, humans said, like, well, we can't run mile faster than four minutes. And then some English dude's like, 
<laughs> yeah. And everyone's like, oh. And then the numbers kept falling because like that's what it is. And I think we're like, what are we at two hours and three minutes, I think, or so like on the on the uh, on a marathon. And mm-hmm. I think we're all like in a cult, you know, cumulatively, we're probably like, no one's gonna be two hours, someone's gonna be two hours. Yeah. Well, after that, it's just gonna keep going down. And so like we have this mentality. So now that we're like, well, I mean, nobody can write, draw, ink, color, letter, a comic book, right? You know, for well, that excuse is gone now. Marvel and D- like for Marvel and DC. Like, I mean, yeah. it, I gotta keep putting the asterisk there. But then it's just like, yeah, now it's gone. You're you're so right. And now like I can't see anybody who's like, I I like it's gotta be a target in everyone's mind. Oh yeah, absolutely. Because it's you know, one as 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 a fan, it's mm-hmm. inspiring. It's I mean, I, I pour through those and I'm just I'm amazed. Yeah. But then also as an artist, you're like, Well, can I do that? Yeah, right. <laughs> like, totally. Because Cliff could do it, so can I I mean right. I can I mean, try. He, I, I'm pretty sure he's still human. Yes, I yeah. think I, yeah. No, it, it, I mean, it's it's one of those, it's it, it's just one of those crazy things. Like, we just have this world where once we see that, like, and I mean, I think everyone wants to do it, like, beforehand. Like, I don't think anybody has never, like, said, like, ah, I would never want to do it. Of course you want to do yeah. it. Because, like, you, you want to just mess with all the stuff and, you know, make the thing. Like, let's make yeah. the thing. And I'm super excited for what this is going to bring forward with, all these all these creators like yeah. it's you know and and you know we know we, we might be necking it down maybe just to two people you know, maybe there's a writer you know and this this visualist you know coming together collaborating on these pieces i don't know but we'll see what we get um and, uh, and there's a there's a there's always been that that financial calculus that yeah. needs to go into it where it's like can i do it right yeah but it's going to take me X amount of time, uh, you know, over whatever period that I'm not bringing any money in. Mm-hmm. So either someone like a, a DC or a Mike, a Mark Miller has got to be paying me while I'm putting this together. Yeah. And I think that's probably the biggest uh, stopping block. Yeah. Yeah. Are we still on? Do you, do you still have me? Yeah. I just want to make sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah it, I mean, that's it. I mean, the financial thing is the thing, you know, um, but I, I, it is insane how fast everybody is getting, you know, in that sense, you know, because I don't think people would have thought you could, you know, pencil ink and color your own stuff on a book, like on a frequency. Like yeah. he's like, oh, I could do one issue a year, you know, kind of thing. Um yeah, I'm, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm excited. Who are like so? Who are the people who are blowing your mind? Like when you were like getting into the industry, or before you got into the industry? Like who are the people who you're like, ah, oh, like I love this. I need this. I had and for me as a fan, yeah, that's why I make that that uh, that's the difference between now and then. Yeah. Then I had a handful of artists whose stuff was just, you know, sight unseen, take my money. You know, if it's anything with George Perez or Bill Sienkiewicz or, you know, John Byrne, it's uh-huh. an automatic buy. I'm just going to get it. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care what it is. I don't care who's writing it, you know. Um, but now, I mean, that list <laughs> just goes on and on you know because there's just so much and it's such a such a broad variety of of different things different styles it's just Mm -hmm. there is there's literally there's something for everyone yeah it's and it's but you know so interesting you know you know the artists that you cite and then the you know and the in your work 
you know, your work is not in that, it, not in the vein of the George Perez, you know, and it's not in the vein of the John Burns or you know, the Bill Sienkiewicz's, but who is, you know, very few are in that vein. But like, it's so interesting because like your, vi like what you do is you clearly have a vision of how you see what the page looks like. Um, it, and it's not, it's not something that looks like John Byrne-ish, you know, <laughs> like it's this kind of, you know, it's you. So where do you feel that that kind of came out? Like, what was the... Um, early on, I mean, I was trying to, very early on, you know, 13, 14, I'm literally mm -hmm. just copying, you know, Titans pages and yeah. trying to draw like George Perez. And then as I got older and that just, you know, I'm like, you, you kind of... I accepted the fact that I, I can't draw like George Paris. Right. It's just not gonna happen, you know? Um, and then fast forwarding, going back to Brian, uh, Brian, you know, one of the very first times that we met, he asked me, he said, do you want to be an artist or do you want to be a storyteller? Right. I want to tell stories. Yeah. I'm not, you know, it's, my stuff is never going to be the, the prettiest thing on the stand because I just try to make sure that the, the, the story is told and in, in the best way that I can do it. Yeah. Um, and just everything serves that end. Yeah. That's, you know, and that's, a, I mean, it's a great, that's a great question, you know, to ask. And someone actually, I was talking to a comic shop owner not too long ago and he was saying that when he was young, he got to meet George Perez at a show and this little kid came up with a drawing, like a little kid, like an eight year old or a 10 year old with a drawing. And, and George is like, Oh, this is really nice. And then says, but in comic books, we tell stories. And is like, so the whole idea of what, you know, and so he's just kind of like, you know, sort of brought light to this child that like comics isn't about doing a drawing of something. It's about really telling telling a tale and yeah. that's the that's the role of the artist you know or the penciler you know whatever you want to call them um and that's really kind of, i mean that's that's super interesting and i like how brian was like framing it for you like there's two yeah. options because he's uh, uh, he was um uh, i think he he was talking about comics and storytelling and he described the comic book as if you walk into an art gallery that has immediately been set on fire. Okay. You're trying to get, <laughs> you're trying to get from one door to the other one. Yep. As all of these, you know, amazing paintings <laughs> are, oh, are catching fire <laughs> and you're just having to, you know, kind of make your way through it. And, you know, it kind of goes back to that thing where it's like, if you think about it, it drives you nuts that yeah. you spend, you know, weeks, months working on this thing that someone is going to read in like tops, like 15 minutes. Sure. Right. You know? But that's what you want. Yeah. That's what you want. You want to move them from that first page mm -hmm. to that last page as quickly and effortlessly as possible. Yeah. Because if the reader has to stop and think about what's, going on and figure out what's happening on this page you fail yeah screw it up yep no that's so true like you, you you your job is to be kind of unnoticed in some sense you know like it, it, to be this like if you could just be really kind of transparent and it's just getting all the information of the story through you know getting that yeah. visual setting everything up letting it come through um that's yeah, no, that's a, that's a beautiful way of that's a really beautiful way of kind of uh, showing it. Um, did you like so like what were the things that like what were the things that you were thinking about like when you first got into making comic books in your thirties? Like what were the things that you were kind of keeping in your mind that you thought you needed to do, and then what do you keep in your mind that are the things that you need to do now? Like like how how has that changed as a storyteller? Um. I don't know that it's changed. Um, 
I think I've just, I've become more and more thoughtful about it. Okay. Um, you know, acting has always been a, a big thing for me. Mm -hmm. Um, when you're younger and you're, you're starting out more, you, you're a little bit more, uh, precious with a script. And that also depends on, you know, who your collaborator is right. and if they are actually a collaborator. Yeah. Um, I've been so lucky with the writers that I've worked with who they, they get it. They're yeah. like, look, I'm going to give you this. And when I hand this off to you, it is your job to tell this story. You're mm -hmm. the one telling it. You need to figure out how to do it. So it's all there. And luckily, I've also worked with a bunch of artists that uh, writers that are artists themselves. OK. You know? um, so visually, they they have already a good grasp of, you know, what needs to happen. And they've allowed me the room to, you know, cut here, add here. You know, I need this much more room to sell this bit. So it's not always, you know, you might send me a, a four panel page that'll end up as six or a six panel page that'll yeah. end up as four. Um, so that I've, I've become more, as you, you do it more, you get a little bit more comfortable with it. And you, you, if you're lucky enough, you work with people that give you the room to do the things you need to do. Yeah. Like, um, I worked with uh, Matt Wagner. Yeah, um, I was just, I, that's, that's who popped in my head when you, when you first started to talk about it, yeah. Yeah, I worked with Matt Wagner on The Shadow, year one. Yeah. And um, he, was, he was so encouraging and was really yours? like... Was that what you that your... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, he really encouraged me to, to you know, kind of stretch things out, do what needs to happen and all. Um, and there's, I always, cause, uh, geez, I always circle back around the Brian, but mm -hmm. Brian, you know, he, when you're looking at a script, he says, and the writer says, someone's sitting down at a table. Yeah. No one's ever just sitting down at a table. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> exactly. They're doing something else. Sure. And if the writer doesn't give that to you, then it's your job to figure out what that is. Totally. So uh, Matt sends me uh, this scene where it's two mobsters and they're sitting in a booth at a restaurant, you know, talking. And it's a pretty, it's meant to be a pretty intense conversation. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the, the character who is the aggressor I have him and he's kind of, he's got a fork in his, and a knife in his hand because he's, you know, cutting up a steak as he's talking. Yeah. And the whole time I have him, you know, gesturing towards the other guy with the knife. Yeah. You know, so it's just kind of this thing. And it's, I, I sent Matt that and he's like, yeah. Yeah. He's like, yeah, you, yeah. that's exactly what you need to be doing. Totally. So then it's just, you know, that's storytelling. Yeah. And I think, yeah, I think, you know, we can, you know, a great place to learn these sort of techniques, you know, is, you know, watching film and watch it. And if you get to go to plays, um, go, you know, go to live, you know, live performances and plays. And the reason I say that is, and it's not like, don't sit there and stare at Tom Cruise being Tom Cruise. Watch all all of the people around and what they're doing, you know, because the, it, it is, you know, the difference between that really good thing versus the bad thing is the good thing is they are, they're all alive. They're all independent and they're doing the thing that they're doing. They're not just serving the protagonist in the scene. So the, all those kind of actions of whatever they're doing on that, you know, that screen at the time or on the stage it, that's where the storytelling comes into play because it becomes natural because, because understandable and you can set all these you can set up other actions 
in these background actions, when their time comes to do their thing, you're not just springing it on the, you know, on the reader. Um, and I think that, you know, there, so there's, there's good areas to kind of find that stuff. So yeah. And you like, and it's your job to take yeah. what's dull and boring and make it not so dull and boring. Oh, it's, it's, I love, yeah. I love the quiet bits. I love the yeah. quiet bits because that's when, you know, if, if I have an action scene, I know it's like, all right, well, this guy needs to get punched through a wall. And then, the, so you, you know what needs to happen there yeah. and it's not that much wiggle room, but with the quiet scenes, then you get to play with it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like uh, one of my favorite movies or one of the movies that's a really good example of that is Heat. Yeah. Um, you know, everybody always goes straight to the shootout the shoot, yeah. in the street. And it's like, yeah, that's that's an awesome scene, and I love it. But my absolute favorite scene in that movie is when uh, Al Pacino pulls over Robert De Niro, and yeah. then they end up sitting in a diner across mm -hmm. from each other talking. Yeah, that's my favorite scene. Yeah, because just that exchange was just so animated. So there was so it was so rich. Yeah. And that's where you probably got the best understanding of the two characters. For sure. Did you listen to the interview today with Michael Mann? Mm -mm. Okay, so you have you have homework after this. You get to go. You get to go to the, uh, to uh, Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts, and go to WTF and download today's episode with uh, Mark Marin interviewing Michael Mann. And it's a great discussion about that whole scene. Um, so you're yeah. gonna be happy. You're gonna be a happy man. So. And the, the other one is, uh, um, I was just I was just posting about that the other day, the bit in Superman, the movie, yeah, where you know Clark comes into Lois's apartment, mm -hmm. she walks oh. into the other room, standing and he takes up off the glasses and transforms into Superman yeah. without the costume. It's yep. just taking off the glasses, and you're like, holy. Crap. Yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah. that, that's like how did he not get like an academy award just for that it's one it's, little bit right there it is i mean listen it, uh, and i know i know i you know there, there's there's a lot of great comic book movies but that's the best comic book movie it is it, you know there's camp unfortunately that you know is of the time but yeah. for the time that that film was made and what they achieved it's it, it it's it is nothing this side of revolutionary and yeah. the best and the best character the best actor playing the best character it, it's unbelievable just well i mean the, that's one of those bits where the movie almost kind of came to redesign uh, redefine yeah. what the character was going to be moving forward in every media yeah you know. you're right well you know you think i mean if you think about like superman as a character in time at that moment in 1978 you know like or 79 whatever it was like that character was you know adventure of the month comic you know like some throwaway villain who has maybe some magical powers comes in and causes some trouble but nothing really too terrible and like superman takes care of it like that was the that was the, his role and then that film came out and then like like it, what was it five six years later we you know john byrne who sort of changed the fantastic four forever you know brought them back to being this amazing thing says yeah. hey i'm gonna do that with superman and like he changed superman like that like it was that movie that had to have influenced him to saying okay like there's modern there's modernity happening in superman like in in pop culture and i think we need to have that in the comic book again because up to that point it was still just like hey i've got a bubble gun and i'm gonna get you with my bubble gun superman oh, you know like i mean don't underestimate the bubble, the bubble gun no, I, I, I wouldn't mess around with a bubble gun no, no, and 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 nor nor should any anybody who is not licensed to handle the bubble. Yeah, um, yeah, it, it's but yeah, I mean that film and that scene in particular, as you say, but that like that like, I mean, I, I remember as a kid seeing that when it was in the theater, and I was like, oh my gosh, like it was like I'm like there's Superman, 
Like that's Superman for yeah. real. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it was great. Um, RIP Chris, because that just, oof. Yeah. still, I'm getting a little bit of a goosebumps from it. Yeah. Um, so like time, time is like the big thing, as we were saying earlier, as a, com- as, as a, as a comic book artist. Um, and you're not like a penciler, you're, you're penciling and inking your work. So like, that's a lot of, that's a lot of work. So process becomes a thing in, yeah. you know, and briefly, like for me, process was when I got into business, I would thumbnail my page. I would blue pencil out what my page was on the, on the actual board and then pencil it in. And that was the process. And then like in the decade, like it became a very different process of drawing things on Xerox on copy paper and then light boxing that through for every single panel. Like it became this really sort of complex thing where the time wasn't going down. It was going more, you know, for in the, in the day work. So how do you manage? And you do a lot of like, you're, you're still like got a pencil in your hand, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So like, you're not like, you're not like sitting there at a, at a, on a screen, you know, I have been, I have been using the, the iPad okay. uh, and procreate a yeah. little bit more for specific things, um, especially when I'm doing backgrounds. I'm yeah. doing like the, uh, remember the old He-Man cartoon? Every time he would stop and do the, you know, to look down the halls, it was always the same background. Yeah. So I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to, I want things to look fleshed out. Sure. Well, I'll draw, you know, on the iPad, the Procreate. I'll draw the room that this scene takes place in and I'll draw the entire room. Yeah. And then I use bits and pieces of it depending on what my camera shot is and Mm -hmm. and whatnot. Um, So with that, it's been really helpful. Yeah. And I can just kind of agonize over my, my figures and their faces and what the line work. Yeah. Yeah. So, so how, I mean, so how does your, what is your, I mean, what's your, what's your sitting at the board, at the table process for getting, you know, so script lands, lands in your inbox. Um, like, what do you, like, what do you do when you get the script coming in? Uh, the very first thing I do is reformat it. Okay. Okay. Cool. I will go through as I'm, as I'm reading it, usually yeah. for the, for the first pass, I'll go through and just kind of, start uh, setting it up one in a way that's more kind of easier for me visually because it's broken okay. down more like what an, the actual page is going to be um, on the off chance that I get, you know, more than one action for a character in a, in a panel description. Then yeah. that's when you're like, no, that's two. And you're like, you know, um, so you're going through and that's the very first thing that I'll do. And then I'll read it again and then I'll read it again. Um, And every time I'm just, you know, kind of trying to make mental notes because some things, you know, when you read it, it just already pops into your head kind of fully formed. Like, all right, well, this is this is how that needs to happen. Sure. Yeah. And then there's other stuff where you got to do a little bit of math and try and figure out like all right well how am i how am i going to make that work um then once i've done all that i've printed out my script and i'm you know making little scratchy notes and you know panel configurations on the the margins and stuff Mm -hmm. um i stopped doing um layouts like actual proper layouts and okay. thumbnails. Um, I think after when I was doing Jupiter Circle with Mark Miller. Yeah. I um I was sending him layouts for all the pages and he emailed me back and he's like, uh these are great, but you know you don't need to send me these, right? Like 
like I asked you to work on this project because I know your work because yeah. I know what I'm getting. So just go for it. Yeah. I'm like, okay. So that's, <laughs> that's just the way that I've been doing it since. Um, Aside from covers, like covers, like I'll sure. I mean, editors do like to have. Yeah, you want to yeah. scratch a couple of little things out just to give them an idea. But yeah, yeah I I kind of cut that process out. Okay, so the but, margin, so the margin sort of replaced your your official. Yeah, so it's really it's really this very rudimentary kind of blocking that you're probably putting yeah. off on the sides. So I'm I'm basically I'm just. Uh, I'm actually just kind of figuring out camera angles, mm -hmm. like where I want to shoot it from. Um, and then I'll scratch out a little kind of panel configuration as what the idea is for how the, the page will be set up, yep. how I have it broken down. Um, and then where things need to be in order to move it. Yep. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Where, where do you put where do you put the key elements to keep the yeah. eye? So the, like the little, you know, the little pegboards that yeah. you drop the the thing in and it bounces to the <laughs> yeah. thing, yeah, yeah, so, but, yeah. And then you know, um, penciling is probably still the most fun part okay. for me. Yeah, just actually drawing because it's the part that I guess it's the part I feel most comfortable with. Um. And then I will kind of torture myself with the inking. Do you, the, what, what about the, I mean, so, I mean, do you typically pencil in colored pencil? Like, I mean, I've seen a lot of stuff and it's color pencil. Yeah. Um, but I, but I, what I'm seeing and, you know, please tell me I'm, I'm missing it, but like you use like one color pencil, like so that you're just in, Hey, this is this, it's not like traditional blue pencil. It's a darker blue that I've seen that you do pencil you pages in. Um, like I would, I ended up doing it in like, I, when I sit and if I draw manually, I will draw with multiple color pencil so I can define different stuff uh, using the colored pencil. Do you do that? I've been doing that uh, more for like, I, I, I tend to always draw in blue pencil. Yeah. If it's like some kind of energy blast or an explosion or sure. something, then I'll use the red pencil so that you know, as I'm looking at it, I know what elements to separate. I don't do it so much anymore, but when I was still doing like hand lettered sound effects, that would right. be in red as well to kind of almost like uh, it's the almost like my traditional approach to different layers yeah. on an image, you yeah. know? Yeah, I, I, you know, and it's interesting. I, I don't, I, I mean, it might have been, I mean, I might have gotten the colored pencil thing uh, when I was close with Dave Johnson in the 90s. But I, I think for me, like, there was a whole, like, it kind of removed the level of fear of kind of blocking in, especially like with shading. Like, mm -hmm. like when if you're, if you're with a pencil and you start putting the same pencil, like the line work, and then you start filling in like these large chunks of black, it was a lot easier to kind of like take a green pencil and just kind of lock things in you know fearlessly versus you know i don't know like oh this is impermanent it's just a green color and it was yeah. it easy i think for me it start. i saw it mostly when i would look at like behind the scenes kind of like animation stuff okay they used like the, a lot of the like the non-repro blue pencil or blue pencil and and stuff but a lot of the 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 previous work and the roughs were all in color yeah and then as i was working um i wanted to work with a softer lead but mm -hmm. the softer lead smears traditional graphite smears too much yeah so then you you know you've got crap all over the page and the back of your hand looks like you know yeah so then once i started to play more with the the color race, the the blue pencil. I mean, it still smudges, but it's you can kind of. It's got a little bit of a. It's a soft lead, but it's got a little bit of a waxiness to yes. it. Yeah. So it doesn't smear. It doesn't you know get all over the place. I can kind of soften it 
if I want for a specific part or I can go in, you know, and I need to sniper this line right here and it needs to go in and that's it. So it's just, it's just a comfort thing. Yeah. Before we hop into transitioning, you know, kind of going from blue pencil on when you were talking about, um, camera angles how do you like so, so like if there's somebody listening who's like struggling with storytelling and camera angles like how do you how do you envision it and what are your what are your techniques of like how do i move the camera around um i i i love movies i love television mm -hmm. and as you're watching that and you you consume more and more of it you start to realize you know, what sorts of directors kind of get the story across to you better, yeah. how things are presented, you know, um, whether it's like, you know, you're watching a, a Michael Mann movie or an episode of Friends, mm -hmm. you know, where the camera's here. It's like, you just kind of have to decide for yourself, one, what, what's, what kind of story do I want to tell? How do I want it? To, to feel and also what's the scope you know if yeah. you have a quiet scene if you have a quiet scene then yeah you can shoot it like friends and mm -hmm. it's you know that's fine but if you're having you know uh, it's a giant robot you know attacking a city you're gonna have to pull that camera back yeah you're gonna have to pull it up you're gonna need to do a crane shot yeah you know uh, you're gonna need to, you're gonna need to do some worm's eye views so you can really show, you know what the what the angle is from the ground sure, looking at yeah. this thing. Yep. So it really it just um, as you're you're playing it in your head and just trying to figure out uh, what's the best way to tell this story. Yeah. What, what gets the point across the best. And you know, there was a work so, on that within the limits of your ability, right? Yeah, well, and use it to push your ability or, or you know, push your limits. I guess there were, like Michael Golden. I was fortunate enough to to uh, for him to be so kind as to teach me a lot of stuff when I was still in school. And he his whole story, like he would talk to me about storytelling a lot. And one of the things that he would say is like, "Well, I just kind of envision a mini cam in my head." And I move it around. So what I do is I establish the, the scene. Like, okay, it's going to be in this space and it's going to be these characters or things are going to be in here. And I take a mini cam and I move it around. And I find the angle that's going to show what I need to focus on, but still show the other elements that are required to keep the story, you know, uh, keep the story continuity intact. And if it needs to be setting up something else. So that camera would move around and the way that I modified that because I don't have his brain, I would take, I would do a sort of a three quarter drawing of the scene and I would just do kind of upside down you people, you know, just, okay. Person, person, person. And I would then draw in dimension sort of these little block blocks, like, which was the camera. And I'm like, okay, well that's gonna be panel one, panel three, panel two, panel three. And I could, I'd move. So I'd be able to see, if it was going to be a wide shot and where the angle was going to be to kind of tell that story. So that was my sort of methodology to kind of um, incorporate that way of storytelling. Yeah. And then also like, um, I mean, I shoot a ton of reference. Okay. Style. Wow. Cool. Um, and like, I'll, I'll sometimes I'll shoot like uh, four or five different shots of the exact same thing trying to figure out like which one feels right. Yeah. Kind of works it the best and stuff. And it's just, it doesn't need to be an elaborate thing. You can do it super quick, kind of just put an eraser down and, and grab your phone and just kind of go around it and try and figure out like, where's this need to be? Where's that need to be? And um, again, just do that to the best of your ability. Yeah. I love that. I love that. I love those. I love those techniques. It's very cool. So, all right. So you've got this blue, this blue line page and you've, you've, you've made all of the, you know, 
lines that you, you, you think, and you've got this big kind of a thick area, which is the line that you're going to, somewhere in there is the line that you're going to end up inking. Um, so like, how do you, like, you don't, you don't go in with a pencil and tighten it up. You go from that right to your inks, right? Oh, sometimes, sometimes I get lucky and I get it the way I want it to be, or at least close enough to where I want it to be, where I can uh, go, you know, from there to inks. Yeah. But other times I'm, you know, uh, I'm roughing stuff out and then roughing it out again and then light boxing that. Yep. And then, you know, kind of pulling stuff out. Like, you know, I don't need this. I don't sure. need that. I don't need that line. I can get rid of this and this and that. And just kind of working it down until I've sucked all of the life out of it. <laughs> I <hate> that. <laughs> 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 you, you, you're just clarifying the life well you're not <laughs> you're not it out. Um, so you look at it and you're like okay i cannot possibly make this character stiffer than he is right now so okay so and now are you inking directly on that same board that the blue is on or you like your life scanning i'm scanning all of that in okay and um i used to always draw all of the pencil art onto one board or one sheet of paper or whatever. And then now more and more, it's just, you know, whatever ends up going right on that is, is there. And then I, I drew this other thing, you know, mm -hmm. a lot bigger than it needed to be or a lot smaller than it needed to be. And then, scanning all of that in and dropping it all together, printing that out in blue line and then inking on that. Okay. And what's, I mean, and, and like, what's the time, like, what's the time frame for you? I mean, I'm, and I, are you able to do all that in one day or is this a sort of a day and a half or two day process for you? I've lost all concept of time. Nice. I, I don't even, I don't you're know. Like, <laughs> like people will ask, you know, well, how long does it take you to do this? And I'm yeah. like, I mean, are you? I don't know. So I mean, like, because like, you know, a lot. I mean, like, a lot of people like I talk to people are like, oh yeah, no, I I pencil it and then I have to ink that same page. Like, I can't move on. And I'm like, like for me, my mom, I'm so like just assembly line, pro, you know, thinker that like I go, oh no 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 no, like I have to pencil the whole thing out before I could even conceive of going back and inking something. Like I need to have like. Oh yeah, no, I won't. I won't start inking. Yeah. Until the entire page is penciled. Oh, so, yeah. But like sometimes, like there's a part of my brain that wants to bank, you know, multiple uh, multiple penciled pages, right? And then just ink for three days. Yeah. Um, but more and more, like I can't let those pages sit because I'll just try and revisit it. I'll go back, you know, tomorrow. I'll think of a better way to yeah. draw panel two. Right. And I don't have the willpower to just let it go. Right. You know? I mean, and that's what you were, you alluded to earlier when we were talking, like, so that, so this is so like, you have sort of found your way to like fight that itch by like, if I lock it and in so ink, if I pencil it, I go straight yeah. to inks on it and then it's done and I put it away and it's, move forward you know For sure. it's just you just need to kind of however slowly you just need to keep moving forward you know yeah. and not mm -hmm. letting yourself get pulled back into things yeah because it's you're always going to think of a better way to do something that you did you know the day before the day before that yeah and i think if, i mean and there's listen there, and i don't think there's anything wrong with recognizing that um but the the key is find a way to overcome that in your in your in your you know your production process. But if you can define it and you can be cognizant of it, well then the next time you're facing that similar problem on the page, you can then employ that new that new solution and you can yeah. go, okay, there, there I did it. And you can move on because I think like yeah, because you <laughs> and you then you also need to be able to tell the difference between something that you could have done better and a yes. mistake if it's a oh. mistake 
then yeah, fix it. Sure. But the other thing, like just just apply that towards the next page. Yeah. You, you figured that yeah. out. Now next time that that you know uh, equation comes up, now you know what a better answer for it is. Yeah, that absolutely that's that makes complete sense. So the inking, you're you're so that's going to be that's done on a printed out uh, version of the pencil compilation, putting it all together. That and, was another thing too that, um, uh, you know, I was earlier on, I was penciling directly on the board. Sure. And um, I, I'm kind of a neat freak and- you I know, couldn't tell. So I, <laughs> so I can't, you know, it would bug me that I'd have to erase and then the ink would, you know, kind of yes. get rubbed out or, you know, the, the paper was all scratched up so the ink didn't take the way I wanted it to. And it's, mm -hmm. Like printing it out in blue line kind of just solved that. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was kind of like, I think that was one of like, you know, whatever, whatever urban legend of it, it goes. But like, I think that was sort of Chris Sprouse's solution early on is that he would draw the pages on the back and then light box his finished pencils through that. Mm -hmm. So he was sort of, he was resolving that all on one, on one page. And then, you know, and I, you know, and I guess, but, Speaking of Carl's story, Carl says that he doesn't do that anymore. So it's a different, it's a different approach. Um, but yeah, I mean, he, yeah, and it, well, that's yeah, that's the worst thing is the worst thing is if the ink doesn't take on the page it is yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It, it is it is a it, 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 just a disaster. <laughs> it's so it's so crazy the 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 longer you do things, the nitpickier you get about yeah. you know paper it's too hot in my office and the ink isn't running right and the yeah. you know the the paper is absorbing too much moisture and it's right. <laughs> it's like oh my god i used to draw in my mom's living room on her little cutting board thing hunched over sitting sure. on the couch yeah. and now i'm like yeah yeah well you're a prima donna now that's what's yeah. happening you know oh, i'm a huge poodle yeah, totally. With a with a with a with a pen in your hand. So I and you do you ink? I, I do. What like what tools do you use for inking? Uh, I'm still using. I I got this. Uh, what was it? My my Pentel water brush. Yes. Yep. That has the you know has the the reservoir in it that is meant for watercolor. And I just fill that with ink and these things kind of last forever. And uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I loved, you know, I loved inking like with a brush on paper. Like there is, there's a real meditative kind of quality of, of, of action. Um, even though it's a terrifying, you know, thing <laughs> like, Oh boy, I can't mess this up. Yeah. Um, you know, and then after after just sort of living in a digital environment for these last, you know, however many years, like I just whatever fear I had of inking de you, you, you know, de decades ago, it is now just, you know, quadrupled in terror. I would I'd be so scared to take crack out the old brush and go on yeah. the paper. It's, so. That's yeah. kind of for me that falls into like that category of like especially like younger artists are always like well what pen is that what what pencil is that it's yeah like, it doesn't matter it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't matter it it's doesn't. not the pen it's not the pencil it's whatever you feel comfortable with yep. that gives you the you know the desired result you could be drawing with a you know with the a sharpie pen. it's yep. just whatever you know and that's the thing. And it's like, you know, I, one of the, I, the first example of that that I can recall, which is nothing to do with, you know, comic books or, or visual artwork was seeing an interview with, I don't know which version of Van Halen it was on like on MTV. And there were the four guys were just sitting there and Eddie had a guitar, but it wasn't the guitar. It wasn't even one of the guitars that you've ever seen him with. It was just a guitar and he wasn't plugged into an amp. 
and they were all talking, asking questions, but he is an inveterate noodler and he's playing. And I'm like, oh, that's Van Halen. That sounds just like Van Halen. And But it wasn't the fancy stripey guitar and he wasn't plugged into a wall of Marshalls. And, and that's when I was like, oh, it doesn't matter what he's holding. Yeah. Because it's going to be whatever his fingers are doing makes that sound. Yeah. And it's the same thing when it comes to, to whatever. I mean, like, we, you know, we see all our favorite artists, yourself included, um, at conventions doing commissions. Now, you don't typically have, you're not, that's not the same setup you, you have right behind you. That's not how you make comic books. Yeah. And yet the artwork comes out looking like, what you do, you know, you know, I, 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 I cite, you know, once again, bring Michael uh, Golden back in the conversation. That guy sits there with Sharpies, Sharpies and creates those, you know, whatever size nine by 12 pieces that he does, which are just mind blowing. Yeah. And it's Sharpie. You know, that's not how he makes comic books. He uses, you know, he uses finer tools in them. I assume. Um, no, but I mean, like, that's just how the thing goes, man. It's like how our hand and our eyes see the thing that we're doing. The t- so the tool doesn't matter. It doesn't matter about that particular Pentel brush that you use or whether it's a, a Windsor Newton brush or if it's, you know. And I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I love trying out new tools mm-hmm. uh, because, you know, you can get different line qualities out of different sure. things and whatnot. Yeah, but it's not. You just you know, mess with whatever. Yeah. Do you want? I mean, do you want to go into the digital realm, like creating comics digitally, like, um, like take 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 the aftermarket out of the equation, okay? Like, let's because I always have to. You always have to remove. The, yeah, there's always that that yeah. kind of that calculation. That extra um, three hundred bucks for for the work. Yeah. Um. For me, I'm always going to want at least most of it to be the physical artwork. Okay. Okay. I genuinely, I can't give you a, a, a rational explanation yeah. to why that is. Uh-huh. It's just, it feels real yeah. to me as opposed to just having a file yeah. on my computer that you know for for comics for production purposes sure um it makes absolute sense yes you you know yeah. go digitally because it's just you, you have greater control over the end product um i don't feel like it's made me any faster when i work digitally but maybe that's just because i don't do it enough and I'm not comfortable enough with it, but yeah, yeah. It's I mean I've done I've done a handful of covers and pinups digitally in the last few years, um, and it's convenient and great. Um, but like I've only made comic books, you know, on pieces of paper. So. Yeah. Like there is sort of there is that quality of kind of maybe it's romant romanticizing it I don't know because um, I kind of go oh yeah no I mean because I, I, I you know I've run the thing through my head I'm like well if I had if I had the money to do a comic book how would I do it would I do it on a computer or would I do it in you know on a piece of paper um, yeah and you know the pragma- pragmatist is like do it in the computer you know but then then like th- that you know, romantic in me he says, well, get the, get the T square out and start making yeah. comics. Yeah. And for me, it's a, it's a, it's also a, a, a textural thing Yeah, where it's like, like one of the things, one of my happiest places mentally is coloring in an old school coloring book with the crappy kind of yellowy craft paper and like Crayola crayons, just the combination of the way the the paper feels on the back of your hand, the smell of the crayons. It's just Mm -hmm. all of it is this thing where it just puts me in a happy place. 
And it's the same thing with work. It's just, yeah, I want to be able to feel the paper under my hand. I want to smell the pencil. I want to smell the ink. I want to feel it. I want to have my, my fingers be dirty when I'm done so that I feel like I did something. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think, I mean, I think it's great. I mean, it's, I, and I think once, you know, once again, that we're, you know, we can talk about this golden age of comics is that, you know, 25 years ago, that was the only option. Now, yeah. the this breadth of ability to what, what we were saying about put whatever you want on a piece on a page, it can get on there. It doesn't matter if however you do it. And, and it's going to look amazing because the production levels are so high so it's it's gonna end up being a killer thing uh, as long as the execution is solid so yeah and you know and i get it i mean you're 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 a romantic at heart will you want you want to be in you want to be in that process you want to be making comics because it's like you're physically making a comic you know yeah 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 i like that i like that i like to think of you as a romantic now that's going to be Who's the, who's the real, most romantic person I know? It's 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 Wilfredo Torres. That's uh, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> I'll tell you. Oh man! So what what's happening? What's going on with you? What are you uh, what are you working on? Do you got you got any projects you can kind of let people know what's going I'm, on? I'm or, working on. I know you have. Like, Superman seventy eight just hit the stores. Oh, tomorrow. son of a did. Uh oh. Just once, yeah, I know. Just give two seconds. I think it would be good. Now, yeah, I hear you. You say, you say what you got. I'll edit it in. Um, yeah, we've got actually my uh, Superman seventy eight hardcover collection hits shops tomorrow. Um, so we're excited about that for people to you know for all the folks who waited and didn't <laughs> didn't pick up the singles hopefully they'll they'll get a, a good experience out of you know checking it out for the first time um that was that was an amazing job um just totally on the like how cool was it that you got to work on that you know it's amazing it I was know. it was like one of those things where you know like just because of the, the way that dc is set up or at least the way it's been set up for the past i don't know 15 20 years mm -hmm. i knew that i was kind of like a square peg there it's like that's not gonna happen um that's so i had always had that thing that was i always wanted to be a superman artist yeah but i had kind of let that go because i'm like i'm a vertigo artist at best yeah, right <laughs> i'm not a a main line they got rid of vertigo damn it. artist yeah. yeah so um yeah when um when my editor reached out mm -hmm. about it, um, I I was I was a no. I was like, you know, I was a no. Yeah. He said, We've got a book coming up that I think you'd be perfect for and <laughs> wanted to talk to you about it. And I was an automatic no. But then I'm like, the last time that Marvel reached out to me and mm -hmm. offered me something and I just gave him a flat no, I still haven't heard back from him since. Like nothing, like, that was it. I said no one time <laughs> and that was it. They lost my number. <laughs> it's, it's so crazy. Cause like you, 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 you wouldn't think it would be that way. Um, and maybe it is, or maybe it isn't, but it is interesting that you're not, you are not alone in that, in that, like, I know many friends and compatriots who have just been like, yeah, I said no to something. And like, I haven't heard from them since, Yeah, you know, and they're like, and I've, I've been working for them for the last like 16 years, 16 years, you know, and yeah. it was just like, boom. You know, I've boom. been, I mean, I had done stuff for them pretty 
regularly. Yeah. I, you know, I worked on a, a blade one shot thing. I did, you know, I worked on Moon Knight. I worked on uh, Black Panther. I did the, the Legion book. So yeah. mo the, you know, between DC and Marvel, I did most of my stuff for Marvel. Yeah. Um, for DC, all I did was like one issue of Batman 66, mm -hmm. literally like years and years ago. And then I did these like two page backups yeah. in Suicide Squad um, for, you know, I think it was like six or seven issues. Okay. Um, and that was it. That's yeah. all of my DC work. So, I mean, I was like, it's an automatic no. And then I'm like, I started thinking about it and I'm like, no, I'm never going to hear back yeah. from them again. So let me at least check to see what it is. What I'm saying no, what I'm saying no to. Yeah. So I emailed them back and I said, you know, can I ask what it is? Mm -hmm. And, um, and he told me it was Superman 78. And I'm literally, I was reading the email and I'm, I mean, I'm not embarrassed to say, I'm like sitting here reading the email and just pouring tears. <laughs> Cause I'm like, not only is it Superman, yeah. it's my Superman. Right. You're not asking me to draw Superman with like armor or, <laughs> you know, a high collar and sure, he's, right. you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's Superman, but with a farmer's tan. Yeah. Like, wait what <laughs> it's like this is my this is my guy yeah so it's not something that i ever even imagined would come up yeah and um uh, me and joe canones were like joking around we're like going back and forth on like uh messaging and stuff and for years you know, for years, he had been posting like his ideas about what a Tim Burton, you know, Two-Face might have looked like, what a sure. Tim Burton Robin would have looked like in that universe, just for fun, because it was something he loved and he was just doing it. Yeah. And for years, I'd been doing, uh, you know, my Octobers and, you know, if I picked the theme, you know, most of the time it was Superman because it was what I want, I enjoyed drawing. Yeah. Um, so I was joking with him and I'm like, did we like manifest these things <laughs> into being? Because it just so happens that they're doing, you know, Batman 89, Superman 78, and we're the two guys that are drawing it. Right. Yeah. So I, you know, I'm, but the thing is, is I guess it's that kind of thing. Like, I mean, you know, I mean, the great thing about for the editors is that they have this sort of, you know, instant access to everybody's portfolio, you yeah. know, and so they can kind of like if they're really doing their art direction side of their job, they can kind of look in and go like, yeah, I can really, really see this like, you know, and, and like, oh, check out, you know, the, you know, the, the Inktober drawings hit it or whatever it is. And it's like, yeah. next thing you know, like, you know, I, I talked to Andy Bennett, you know, like if there's going to be a Muppet, you know, co you know, graphic novel or movie, he's the guy. Like no yeah, one else yeah. can draw them up. It's like Andy Bennett. So like, um, but yeah, I mean, was that like, I mean, like if, if you have like, is he, was that like one of your dream check off characters to be working on? Um, it was, uh -huh. uh, I remember like years and years ago, a friend of mine asked me, he was like, so if you could just, you know, set your, your comic book, claim to fame yeah you know like what would it be uh -huh. and i don't know what the hell i i've been <laughs> i was on that day but i said <laughs> i want to draw more superman comics than kurt swan Ooh, yeah and you know because i just, that for me that was like the you yeah, know the benchmark that was the top of the mountain for me yeah yeah, those, I mean, man, those, like, those Kurt Swan comics, like, when we were kids, like, they were just, like, you felt so good, you know, like, you yeah. felt really good, and then, like, when the Superman movie came out, like, it was so, it, I mean, the tone of that film was so perfect, and so, like, right on, you know, certainly with Chris, Chris Reeves' performance, I mean, it just, like, I, I mean, 
you know, yeah, I guess I was like 11 or so when that came out and it just blew. I mean, like just, I'm like, this is it, you know, like, yeah. like, I'm like, we got superhero movies. Of course, that was a really premature response, but <laughs> that was it's like, we have superhero movie. Yeah. Yeah. It really, uh, it was, a, it was a bit of a dry spell. Um, but yeah, that's, yeah. I mean, are there other characters that would, you would like, you know, are sort of like your sort of dream characters i mean i mean obviously there's tons of great independent stuff and the unknown unknowns you know yeah. like hey I've, I've invented something and next thing you know you're the superman new yeah. superman but um who else there's i mean there's tons of stuff that i would want to play with yeah but um you know i, I i'd i'd love to spend some a little time in gotham city sure so it was like a a, a writer that kind of you know, was coming at it from the same place that I that I would want to. Yeah. You know, because I just I think of that character, and I just think of like you know when the the over the title it's a you know world's greatest detective. Dude, you're speaking my it's... language. Oh my god. Okay, so maybe you and I have to have some off offline calls because like <laughs> I'm it it is you are absolutely speaking my language because. That to me is what, I, yeah. Okay, we'll, we'll, that's, I mean that's that's the guy that yeah. There's there's a lot of it that is not that that I enjoy yeah. and that I consume. Sure, but the only thing that I could see myself working on and enjoying would be that. It yeah. would be that guy. Totally. You know what I mean? I don't want to draw him like just you know driving his knee into somebody's face and all Another that guy's face but it's like <laughs> that's that's not me but like him him, uh you know i'd love to do a hulk book or a fantastic uh, war oh dude i'd love to see your hulk like i would love to see like i love the hulk that's yeah, like yeah. i don't know why i it's just growing up i was always a dc kid mm -hmm. but there were certain marvel characters that yeah. always kind of resonated with me. And I mean, Hulk was one of them because he had a great freaking cartoon. Oh, <laughs> and, was, you know, yeah. Spider-Man, amazing Spider-Man and, and friends and, you know, growing up with that. And I'm like, these guys are awesome. I oh. love those guys. But I never read the comic books. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> you know, I'm just reading, like, you know, Justice League and Three Superman. Comics. Oh, dude, yeah. The, yeah. Uh, and yeah, I mean, as a kid, it's funny. I, I don't think I was a huge DC reader as a kid. I mean, I love my Superman comics. I love my Batman comics because if you needed a comic and they were there, you're like, yes. Um, but it, it was like, I loved watching the Super Friends. Like for me, like, and like, it's yeah. so funny because I don't, you know, all those cartoons, I didn't know. I didn't know that that was Alex Toth, you know, making my world a better place until I realized, and I'm like, oh my God. Same, this, same here. Th this is like the hand of God has, you know, made cartoons for me, you know? And it was just, and it was just like this perfect sort of synergy. So that's yeah, like, And all of that, all of those, like that, all of the, the Tothy, like uh, Hanna-Barbera cartoons, yeah. like the Herculoids and stuff. Oh, yeah space ghosts and all that I'm like, there's a there's a dude who an animator um out in la named lance falk i think is his name and in the 90s lance would you know he he would come to san diego and he would go around and he'd like if he liked you he would say hey i'd love you to do a piece of my my sketchbook and you you know and he wanted like a full color illustration i was like all right cool and he's like and i'll pay you in xeroxes of toth artwork all the style guide drawings from, xeroxes yeah from the from the hanna barbera stuff okay and what he did is he since he worked in the industry he took he had found them and he cleaned them all up mm. and and he's like the only thing i ask is don't make copies of these and give these away because it's my leverage of getting good artwork in my in my sketchbooks i was mm. like done no problem you know everyone would come over to the studio and just you know ooh, you know, just drool over them. And it was, you know, because this is, you know, decade plus, you know, maybe 15 years before, you know, we had to access this stuff. They got reprinted and we now can see it. But it was like, it was magic, you know. 
best. Uh, uh, I, I would want to either have that or like the, you know, Jose Luis Garcia Lopez, the DC style guide. Like those. <laughs> is, yes. No, that's, that is like, that's a Holy grail kind of thing that, that, that is a whole, like, and why they don't reproduce that thing and sell like a really nice quality image version of that. Yeah. Like, you you would have a whole line around the block for that thing. Yeah, that's one of those things where I think about it, and I'm like, I know for for us, we think about it, and we're like, are you kidding me? I'd go out and spend like hundreds of dollars on right. that thing. I do wonder really <laughs> like, whoa, it's gonna sell like hotcakes, yeah. and it's like. Uh, yeah, to every single artist, and right. then no one else is gonna buy it because they're like, "Who's this guy?" And why do I want pictures? Like, yeah, no, I guess I mean you're right. I mean, I keep saying I'm, I don't know why they don't. I mean, I'm sure it's a good licensing thing, but man, if they if they did a beautiful like deluxe edition, well, they, could, of, they could if they wanted to put together like a really nice like treasure, uh, you treasure. know, oversized yes. thing. Oh, that'd be amazing. I mean, they did. I, they did the uh, like the who's who, yeah, ginormous yep. book. Yeah. And I went and got that on like the day it came out. Right. There's so much good stuff in those. Um, I would love them to do a treasury edition of uh, the Atari Force because I think that is one of the that is one of the hidden gem things. You know, because every time people hear Atari Force, they just roll their eyes thinking it's the dumbest thing in the history of things. But you're like, oh, no, 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 no. This no. is. You it, haven't seen this comic book. It is like, yeah, it is like getting to glimpse behind the, you know, the curtain. It is the best. Um, yeah. Yeah, man, that guy, that guy's just, just a superhero of mine. That guy's just the best. Yeah. Um. So. Yeah, I mean, yeah, thumbs up, superhero seventy eight, uh, Superman seventy eight, man. That's just the that's like dream project, and to have that kind of thing, you know, is just a you know, you're never gonna you're never not gonna be smiling, you know, in your heart because of some yeah. like projects like that. Um, so you are doing another thing with Matt Kent, right? Kent, yeah, yes, Kent. Sorry, um, yeah, Matt and I did um, bang, um, and we had a ball yeah. working on that. And it was, you know, for me, it was so much fun to work on it because just the way that he approaches his, you know, his writing and the way he, he, he kind of puts things together is just really entertaining to, you know, to read and to work on. Cause I'd been reading his stuff for a while before, you know, we ever, spoke or you know talked about working together right um and we were gonna do a follow-up to it but then superman 78 came into it and i called him up and i i just i, I literally like my stomach was like in knots and i called oh. him up and like, dude um this thing came up and um i wanted to talk to you about it and i told him what it was and he's like Oh, it's like no, you you don't say no to that. Like you right. go do that, and then when you're done with that, we'll we'll do our thing. Yep. We were originally we were going to do a follow up to Bang, but then uh, you know time elapsed in between, and then we kind of got back together and we're like, let's just do something completely different. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So the the project we're working on now is bizarre is that what you're posting those drawings on instagram the yeah i, I started i i held off yeah for a while yeah i didn't want to like show Too any much. of it yeah. but then i started like recently posting like process stuff from it um because i kind of got to bits where it's like all right well i can post this and not it doesn't give anything away right. Yeah, that's uh, w, yeah. Go go to W Torres, uh, nineteen seventy two because it is, they're really they're really good. Like, like so, well, because it's so funny. Like, I I looked at that and I'm like, man, this is so good. And then I read your caption. You're like, like I just you're like I just found the angle. Like I just found the thing that I'm really feeling this. You know, like when you hit that moment in the stride of, 
of whatever you're creating and then you go like yeah oh god this is so good like it really like you can be happy with what you do so yeah and that's and it, it's interesting because i saw that and then i read your caption i'm like yeah of course of course he's happy it was um man i was i was in such a slump mm -hmm. and just like just like every time I finish a project, I always have like a couple of weeks there where I call it my my post mortem period, right. where I'm basically just consumed and like cleaning up yeah. all of the stuff that I had and process stuff and putting it all away and just kind of getting back to like a clean slate. Yep. With Superman seventy eight, it I mean that process took like a year from the time that I finished it, <laughs> you know, cause it was like, it was such a, uh, I was so invested, I, I was so invested in it mm -hmm. just mentally and emotionally and stuff. And I, I, you know, if you were working on a regular Superman book or Batman book or, you know, Thor, whatever you get put on, the first thought in your head is, how do I make this mine? Right. Like, how do I approach this in a new way? This and that and the other thing, blah, blah, blah. And for me, it was the exact opposite. It was, how do I do this? How can I do this and make it feel like what it's supposed to be? Totally. You know? yeah. yeah. So it's like... I'll see people like posting like panels from it and stuff. And they're like, Oh, what scene in the movie is this from? And I'm like laughing. Cause I did that intentionally because the, the best solution that I could come up with was, you know, like I, I, the problem I gave myself was mentally mm -hmm. and people are reading the book. What's the best way to make them feel like they're watching the movie. Yeah. Yeah, it feels like it. Have them watch the movie. Yeah. So I literally kept sprinkling it through the entire thing. Mm -hmm. I kept sprinkling in things from the from the movies that were direct, where yeah. it's like, this is the pose, this is what he was doing, this is the thing, because Reeve had such specific mannerisms for Clark, specific mannerisms for Superman yep. that, you know, you kind of have to try and figure out how to recreate that. So it's like, you know, well, I do this. This is me. This is me. This is me. This is me. This is the movie. This is me. This is me. Mm -hmm. So that way I just constantly kept pulling people back yeah. to the movies. And yourself. And it kind yeah. of it, it would bring you back in because it brought you back to that. Here's the baseline. I got to be back. You know, here's the baseline. I'm back. I'm back here. Okay. Yeah. And your hand is your hand and I are going. Yep. That's the thing. I'm going to keep yeah. keep bringing. Exactly. That yeah. And that's yeah. you know that was so. Then when I was done, I almost had to like as I'm working on the new project with Matt, I'm like still doing things where it's like I. I was still kind of doing, approaching the work the way that I had been on Superman 78. Right. So it took me a while to kind of get out of that and say, okay, no, this is, this is what I do. Right. When I'm not trying to recreate a movie <laughs> sure. from the 70s, <laughs> this is what I do and how I tell a story. So. Totally. Totally. It was, it was, it was a transition. It's, you know, it, you know, I, I, so like putting it in a different, you know, in a different term, you know, like, uh, like for, you know, for me, like with writing, like, so I just, as I told you before, before we started recording, I've been, uh, I'm drafting uh, a new novel and it's a, it's the sequel to the previous one, but the previous novel, I had just finished up doing, uh, revision passes so when you're writing and fixing <laughs> all yeah. the things that you made mistakes on your mind works in a certain fashion so but when you sit and you're drafting well that's a, you know you're doing this editorial thing you're you're thinking about structure you're thinking about sentence structure you're thinking about voice you all these things you're thinking about trying to make them work 
But when you're drafting, you're not supposed to care about any of that stuff. It's sketching, you know, it's laying out. It's just kind of feeling the moment and kind of going, okay, does this composition work? You know, you're not thinking like, well, if I put this here and I elbow the elbow is a little higher, then I'll be able to, like, you just kind of feel those vibes and then you fix it if it's kind of off, you know, in post, you know? Yeah. Um, and I totally get that because I mean, your mind has to kind of remap itself to that, that thing. And you got to get back to what you do when you're just, when you're doing a book, you know, like yeah. how to create from nothing. So, um, that's, yeah, that's, that's huge, man. Um, so what's the timeline with this, pro with this project? Like how big is it? And like, it's, um, I think at this point it's, <laughs> I honestly can't remember if it's four issues or five. Okay. Well, four or um, five, yeah. but it's, it's this weird kind of thing where it's a, the the main character is a basically a pi in the near future not the distant future okay, sure so near future um and then it's also a uh barbarian story okay and the guy keeps shifting kind okay. of back and forth yep. so you don't actually know which reality is is actual well, reality or maybe they cool. both are or yeah. you know it might be you know instead of a or b it might be c sure it's it's, okay. it's weird it's i get to draw a whole bunch of different you know things and different from different you know genres so yeah well, where are you? Where are you in the process? I mean, are you? Booking I it? am <laughs> yeah. uh, closing in on the uh, tail end of the first issue. Oh, okay, okay. So we, so you, you have another half, a well, little under a half a year to get this all kind of tied yeah. up. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I actually, I, I spoke to Matt on the phone the other on Friday, I think, and he's like. Yeah, I guess I should start working on a script for issue two because yeah. you're you're gonna need it soon. <laughs> I'm like, thank you, thank okay. you. That'll be nice. That's awesome. That's cool. That's cool. I it's it's got to be nice to have projects where you're like sink you can sink your teeth into you know four issues or five. Matt, yeah. if you're listening, five. Um, you know, and like I mean, but it's nice to be able to sink your teeth into something and really kind of get lost into a story and then you know emerge and then have an, have another thing to dive back into yeah um, yeah but like so how far out do you like i mean do you i mean how, how much sense of control do you have in the terms of like okay you're doing this you're early in this project like about the next thing like how like how far do you try to line up the uh, you know the the planes for on the land you know for the landing field um i honestly i haven't even thought about it yeah okay i am yeah. um, I, you know, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm a little kind of, you know, I'll, I'll get to the point where, you know, I, I almost want to have like a gap yeah, in between things just so I can kind of just relax and, yeah. you know, but of course, after like a week or two of not working on anything, <laughs> I start getting itchy and I'm like, oh, <laughs> like, I think at one point, I can't remember what it was. I finished something and, um, you know, I'm like, I didn't, I didn't automatically have, cause I mean, I've been really lucky in that most of the time before I finish one thing, I already know what I'm doing next because somebody got in touch or whatever. Yeah. So I've been very lucky with that. But at one point I had the gap where it's mm -hmm. like, I didn't know I finished this. The dream I gap. didn't know what I was, yeah, exactly. <laughs> My vacation. Um, I didn't know what I was working on next. And I was like freaking out and stuff. And I think at one point, like after, you know, I was already working on something else. I was talking to my wife about it and I'm like, I was crazy, man. I, I, I feel like I was out of work for like three months. 
And she's like, it was two weeks. <laughs> it was two weeks before you started another project. <laughs> Three months. <laughs> oh, that's that's hilarious, man. Yeah, well, hey, yeah, I mean, that's how our sort of our minds work. But I mean, that's how you that, that, that you know, that's how we keep chasing the, you know, the the caribou, you know, like, you, yeah, you just got to keep getting back out there. Um, that's cool. So I mean, I like that. I've never heard it put that way. Oh, that's, yeah, I'm, that's always like, I always try to like tie everything back to like our basic needs. So it's just like hunting the caribou, man. It's just like, there you go. Get out there. Um, so the, I mean, are you able like, when you're working on a project like this, are you able to squeeze in a few like like, are you able to time in like covers or, or anything like that of that nature? Um, I mean, I do sometimes. Yeah. Um, but that was Dexter. I, I, it's by it's the way. usually not a a what? That was Dexter texting. Sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> he yeah. Uh, him and George's uh just had a thing last week where they were like at like a distillery or something oh no and they were doing like a you know like a comics thing uh -huh. and i'm like i saw it at my shop it was posted you know that they were going to be doing that and i'm like i want to go check that out and then i saw it on instagram like after the fact and i'm like Wait, when was this <laughs> But yeah, because any any chance I get to pick Dexter's brain would Dude. be very useful. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, it's it's insane. He's so good. He's so good, and just he's the best. Um, yeah, I was I was, I, I was asking about covers, like getting squeezing covers into into your routine. I don't get that much cover work. Yeah, so okay. It's not. Yeah. It, it hasn't been. A uh, problem. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I know. I know that. I know that. I know not having that problem myself. Uh, that was definitely a pretty common not problem. Yeah. I think if anything, the, the the biggest ding in my schedule is like, I I still have this insane idea about drawing for fun, mm -hmm. where it's yeah. not work. And I'm like, I, every once in a while, I need to take, you know, a couple of hours to just do something completely, yes. you know, for for no reason whatsoever. I think I think that's I think that's amazing. You know, like, I mean, John Paul was like that. And there's and there's plenty of other people who are like that, who I just go. I'm just so amazed by that sort of that. OK, I'm going to keep drawing like I'm going to warm up. I'm going to, I'm going to have like, and I'm like, to me, I was like, Oh, I just turned the switch on and turn it off. Like I did it, you know, while I, yay, great. I had that ability to do that. I also didn't, it didn't help me uh, on the progression level. You know what I mean? Like, you know, you were hit, that stuff is hitting the gym, you know, that's going to the gym. It's doing the reps. It's making, doing all that extra stuff makes it when you're sitting at the table that much easier. It like yeah. it's really one of those kinds of things. So like, I don't really you know, think my method was very, uh, you know, good for longevity in that sense, because it just wasn't putting that time in after the fact, I'm like, I can do the skill. So why do I need to do more of it? But I get it. Like you really need to for, do for me also, it's, it's, um, you know, much more about experimenting too, because when yeah. I'm doing my work, I'm, I'm much more conservative in that, you know, it's like this is what I know how to do, mm -hmm. and, and you know this is my kind of my skill set. So I'm I'm here. Yeah. Um, but when I'm just doing stuff as like a warm up or a cool down or whatever, and I'm like breaking out like yeah. you know uh, charcoal or markers and this and that and the other thing, and then eventually, and over time, I have been able to take some of that stuff and incorporate it into yeah. actual print work. So that's, you know, that chance where I get to play is that's what gives me the confidence to kind of, kind of try different things. And I think that I think there's a there's a great there's a great liberty in that because I mean first off it doesn't matter. So if you make a mistake it doesn't matter. Exactly. And so you're willing to kind of do some efforts that you normally wouldn't try. And the other thing is is that like 
like I, I and I wrote about this not too long ago, but it's one of these things where I remember I remember when I first noticed it was in it was in the figure drawing class, and I was just sucking, just like couldn't like it just there was no life, it was dull, and I don't know if it was the instructor or it was me, but let, let's just give the credit to the instructor, you know, and he came along and just like took the pencil out of my hand and like hand, like grabbed the piece of vine charcoal from my box and jammed it in my hand like there now go. And what what I did is it forced me to kind of re-engage with with the drawing process with a completely different tool. And I learned that lesson and I applied it be, forever. Like I would always do it even when drawing comics. I was like, okay, I'm not going to use, you know, the big mechanical pen, pencil that you, you know that you you know, I'll use a number two, you know, and, and put it in the pencil sharpener. Like I would change up the tools because I knew that like my mind would have to figure a new way to do it. Um, yeah. And I do that with, with writing. I do, I've done it with every single thing that I've ever done with design. It doesn't matter if you change your tools, your mind has to adapt. Um, and I think it's a super important skill set. So I think that like, that's sort of like that to me sounds like it's a refreshing process for you you know, like how you say, like, you have to do that in between projects. But I think that's actually why you're consistently working. There's your refresh. You know, you're yeah. giving your mind that opportunity to kind of learn and relax. Yeah. 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 And it is relaxing because it's, you know, and I've, I've heard other people say that where it's like, why would you want to keep drawing after yeah. you finished whatever page you were working on? you know, as a cool down. And it's like, sure. that's how I get my brain to just calm down for a little bit, you yeah. know? Oh, it's, I, I, it, no, I mean, in retrospect, I go like, man, like I was so off the mark, you know, in that, in that, in that, in that sense. And I'm really like, you know, and I'm like, yeah, I would really have loved to have been a little more like, yeah, let's keep going. Let's, let's do the next thing. Let's have fun. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think that's a, I love it. I love that you're doing that, man. Um, and since if you're if you're doing something that John Paul did, well, then you're doing the right thing in my book, because um, he knew his way around every single tool. Um, yeah, dude, I'm super. I'm super excited to see this next project. Um, I can't wait for you guys to announce more about it soon. Um, you know, Matt needs to write uh, the second issue, so um, and the fifth issue, because now it's going to be five five page uh five issue arc then we, we, we <laughs> new. It, it, it might end up being one of those things where it's like all right well we're actually gonna need an extra one to yeah to this off well i mean listen you tell the story that you need to tell you know if you and if you have the, the luxury of being able to tell it in five then you tell it in five um okay. who's it gonna do you know who the publisher is gonna be? dark horse oh sweet awesome great yeah i love it yes cool um anything else anything you want to tell you know i mean i've got the thing scrolling uh mighty fine line at twitter and yeah and w uh, torres at 1972 why don't you just change the one to w torres 1972 and then we can find you in one spot i, I don't know i i um i think I had the the W Torres nineteen seventy two for like forever. Yeah, I like and that. And then the mighty fine line I actually got from uh, Stelfreeze. Oh, because uh, one of my earlier portfolio reviews, I can't remember exactly what it was, but he like pointed at something. That's a mighty fine line. And he's like, "That's a mighty fine line," and I was like, "Taking that." <laughs> <laughs> I guess uh, yeah, sure. I mean, yeah. I mean, if you're gonna get if you're gonna get an accolade from someone like Brian, then I guess you would definitely uh, you'd want to keep that. Yeah. So, is is not not the oddest thing that we now have sentimental value for social media handles? Uh, yeah. Yeah, kind of, <laughs> kind of ridiculous. I think, I think it's like I don't want to change my phone number. You know how long it took me to remember what my phone number was. Oh, man, I got I. You know what? It's so funny. Like, so briefly, like, so I, you know, I lived in Manhattan. I had my Manhattan two one two phone number forever and ever. And we bought a we bought a house and it was outside of Manhattan. So when we moved, we had to leave our phone behind because. This was the, the 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 advent of the you know the iPhone it just came in like the same year, mm. and the phone companies hadn't 
done the thing like so i got to keep my cell phone number but i didn't get to keep my my landline number which i really wanted to have to become my cell phone number but it just like it it wouldn't happen and i was really upset so my beautiful 212-977-5644 it's out there um somebody give it a call see who answers i don't know it's not mm -hmm. me um Cool. Well, yeah, find find Wilfredo on uh on Instagram. But you post more on Instagram, I guess, than you do. On uh, I post more relevant stuff. Okay. On Instagram. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, Twitter, first, Twitter, Twitter kind of you know gets off the. It, it, I I run off the rails on Twitter a lot. Yeah. I well, I mean, there, there's the, the I think the give and take aspect of Twitter is fantastic but it is it is an invitation to disaster at times so oh yeah yeah, yeah. We, you know we all need to be cool that's the best way to handle twitter just be cool man um yeah and uh, any are you doing any shows for the rest of the year or are you um i don't think so okay i think uh the, the only shows that i do uh you know over and over again are south carolina comic-con and heroes yeah um, Are you going to go for the? They got the mini con. South Carolina's got the mini con in October. Um, yeah, Michelle asked if I wanted to go to that, and I don't think I'm going to be able to do October, but I'll be there in April. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'll be there too. Um, so yeah, I'm debating about doing the October one just because it is 58 minutes from my house. So. Oh, is it? <laughs> yeah, so it's not a big deal. Um, it's the most convenient comic convention in the history. Well where i live new york comic-con used to be the most convenient one because it was seven blocks away so um cool man well um this is fantastic um are you cool everything cool yeah, yeah i'm good yeah awesome man. um oh and just by the way we had technical issues so that's why uh, it's dark outside um and will's wearing a different t-shirt and drinking from a different cup so yeah. We uh we're not we're not charlatans we're just uh, you should edit in like a record scratch oh maybe I'll do that it, like yeah. you know maybe, yeah. and then come up with like the SpongeBob you know four weeks later yeah <laughs> <laughs> I know it feels like it feels like a long time ago but I it guess does. it does I know it's like a time well a lot of ha lot lots happened like in a week and a half or week and two days or whatever it was um awesome well thank you um. Uh, wait, I think I have outro music. No, I don't. I didn't change oh, it. So yeah. it's just, it would make too much noise. I'm not going to do it. Um, put the music in your head if you've heard the music before. And uh, Will, thank you for joining me. This is great. And um, hunt him down. He's great. Go go get Superman 78. It's in the stores. You can like hang out with Christopher Reeves and Margot Kidder for like hours. Look, there it is. It's fantastic. Uh, hardcover. I know that is so brilliant. Andrew Marino, he's a very brilliant man. Yeah, it's brilliant. It's 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 a, it's a great great design for the book and beautiful everything else around the book. So, all right, well, appreciate it. Thank you. And um, Thanks, man. yeah, yeah, and uh, everyone else have a great time, and we'll see you, hear you, talk to you, whatever next week. <laughs>